Welcome to today's live in this wonderful group answering the call. Apologize for being a minute or too late. It wouldn't let me start my video. So that's why uh, we're starting a little bit late today. Uh, but if you're here in person, please say hello. And if you're watching this on replay, please put in hashtag replay. Love knowing you're here. If you have any questions today or anytime, let me know. I will answer them. And uh, so welcome. I'm Peggy O'Neill. I'm the founder of this group, Answering the Call, and also the creator, or creator of Wisdomary Leading which is a fundamental shift in how we lead our lives, lead uh, our organizations, how we can lead our families, communities, and the world. And it's based on the new game-changing understanding of the nature of reality, based on science and wisdom traditions. And answering the call specifically is about answering that longing that we have for, um, often the question is, isn't there something more to life it's that longing, it's that sense that yes, there's something more to life, something more that I'm here to express in maybe a more powerful, unique way, uh, and or who am I? What, you know, who am I really in this world? So welcome, we are always expanding that conversation and I'm bringing lives that help us understand and live as who we truly are. Hey Sharon, very happy to see you. Thank you for being here. So today, our topic today is dramatically reduce the stress in your life. Dramatically reduce the stress in your life. And what we're going to discover today is how the belief in a separate self creates stress. That not trying to be in control creates incredible freedom. How to open yourself to what is truly possible for you and then what a scene from the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, illustrates. You know, that's the movie around Christmas with Jimmy Stewart. So we're going to talk about those things today. So how does a belief in a separate self create stress? Because it sure seems like we're separate, right? You know, I'm over here. You're seeing me inside a computer and you're wherever you are. And so it seems like there's a separation there. And... Yet when we explore that, we realize that I cannot separate myself from any experience I have. So you're experiencing watching me on this computer. You can't separate yourself from that experience. It's one seamless experience in life, in all of life. <laughs> so that's maybe starting to get the gears going about. So how does a belief in that separate self create stress? Well, if I think I'm separate from everything, then think about it. Everything is the universe, the infinite nature of the universe. Or even if you're not thinking about the infinite nature, there's some sense there are all these planets, planets, galaxies. Or even if you bring it closer to home, there's all of Earth. There are 8 billion people, trillions of plants and animals and gazillions things, right? So if I'm this separate being from all of that, then I've got to protect myself. Now this all isn't things we're, we know, I mean, that we're consciously aware of. It's, it's sort of unconscious. It's behind the scenes. But if we check in, we can just see, yeah, that's the programming kind of running me. I've got to protect myself. I've got to defend myself. I've got to keep other people out. We want to talk about boundaries. What does that do? Keeps people out. And when we think that we've got to protect ourselves, and I'm this finite, limited, constricted, restricted being in the world, that creates stress because I'm alone. Even if I've got hundreds of people around me, if I'm feeling that sense that I'm separate from them and separate from life, then I'm going to feel stress because I'm going to feel all alone. I'm going to feel I don't belong. Again, these are not surface, uh, you know, uh, things you're thinking that are real obvious. They might be now that I'm pointing them out. And, and then it creates stress because we, we, we also identify, when we identify with that, I'm a separate self, then we think I'm responsible for everything. There's someone to blame here. If something's going wrong, it's all about me. I did something wrong. Think about that. That's incredible stress. We're told you're 100% responsible for your life. You've got to make something of yourself. Wow, the pressure, the intensity of that. So all of those are misunderstandings about who we truly are. Because if we're one with the universe, 
then there are infinite possibilities available. I'm not an effect of the universe. I'm actually, uh, I influence what's around me. And other things influence me. So that's why we're not 100% responsible. That creates so much stress for us, partly because I think we sense, we know that's not accurate. There's so many other things happening in the world all the time. We're being influenced by those. So all of that creates incredible stress. So how does not trying to be in control, which once we realize that we're not separate, I'm not in control, I'm being lived. I'm one with the universe. Everything is influencing me. I'm influencing everything else. It's all interconnected in a flow. Then how does that create freedom? Well, now we're not focused on this individual self that's supposed to do something. We don't focus on the thoughts that are telling us all of that. Our thoughts are, are um, random. <laughs> they appear to us. They appear to us out of nowhere. But we're paying attention to those. And they take us away from our true self, which is our true nature is peace and love and happiness. So we don't pay attention to our thoughts. In fact, what you can do right now, if you want, is notice that you're aware and then relax the focus of your attention. Relax the focus of your attention. And as you relax the focus of your attention, you might notice thoughts come to you, feelings come to you, sensations. You notice all these things occurring and arising in who you truly are but they're not who you truly are because they're always changing. And we can see that um, we can't control all of that. So when we relax our attention, we see the freedom that we actually are because who we are actually is what's aware of all of that. We can see, oh yes, awareness is inherently free. All these things are coming and going. Our focus comes and goes. We look in different places. That, that's the freedom we actually are when we relax our attention and don't focus on anything in particular, any thoughts in particular, feelings, sensations. We're free when we do that. And you might go, but I need my thoughts to carry out something. So, so what happens when we don't focus on the thoughts that arise in the way that I'm talking about, relax the focus of our attention notice that we're aware of everything then other thoughts can arise that are free of those controlling thoughts other thoughts can arise that are free of those controlling thoughts so that's where the creativity is the aliveness is the um the um possibility is so when we don't try to be in control which we're not anyway and we're lax into this knowing, then we're relaxed, we're free, we're not stressed. And when we notice we're getting stressed again, we do the same thing. Relax the focus of our attention and just let thoughts come and go. But And when they catch our attention, because they will, then we, we notice, oh, that has my attention again. Relax your attention. That's freedom. And how do we open ourselves to what's truly possible for you? Well, I basically just said it. I jumped ahead, I guess. I put it together, intertwined it. So how do we open ourselves to what's truly possible? It is just that we relax our focus of our attention from our thoughts, our feelings, our sensations, the activities that are going on. Yes, when we need our attention to drive, when we need our attention to finish a project, sure. But other times when we, when we notice we're caught up in things, we can relax our attention and be still and see what arises. Notice ideas that come to us. Stay open to what's possible. Remember that you're infinite, infinitely wise. You're infinitely intelligent. intelligent. You are the universe. And staying open to that. And as you do it over time, it becomes more and more real for you. You're, you open up more and more and more. So it's just sticking with it, sticking with it, sticking with it. Keep returning to the truth of who you truly are. And then now, what is a scene from the movie, uh, It's a Wonderful Life Illustrates? So do you remember Clarence, Clarence the Angel? And uh, one time he was being chased by the sheriff. 
Remember the Gruff, Gruff Sheriff? He was on Wagon Train, too, many years ago. Forgotten his name. But anyway, the sheriff was chasing Clarence around, and then he grabbed him. The sheriff grabbed Clarence, and then, he, then all of a sudden, Clarence wasn't there. He disappeared, and the sheriff's going like this, scrambling to try to hold on to something that's not there. That's what most of us are doing in our lives all the time. We're trying to hold on to something that's not there. This illusion that there's a separate self that's in control, that's the illusion. That's what we're hanging on to that creates incredible stress, keeps us from feeling free, keeps us from living the life that we really are here to live. This free, open, alive, passionate, creative life. So as long as we try to hold on to that, we're holding on to this illusory thing, just like Clarence. <laughs> we can't hold on to it. It's not there. <laughs> So, how to dramatically reduce the stress in our lives? Then um, uh, remember that you're one with everything. Relax your attention. Take, you know, just don't focus on anything in particular. Relax your attention. Let the thoughts go. Let the feelings go. And um, and then um, by realizing everything that we're saying today, and realizing when you are trying to be in control, that it's like grabbing onto Clarence that's not there, then relax your attention. Just relax your attention. Then you'll feel the freedom, the relaxation. The stress will go away. And yes, it takes a while for it be, to become fairly quickly experience, I mean, for you to fairly quickly experience the reduction in stress, but that's okay. I mean, it might only take a few days. It just might not happen the first time. You just keep coming back to it. And then you just to keep doing the same thing and that's what's open that opens you to what's truly possible for you relax the focus of attention from your thoughts feelings activities um relationships because you'll know what to do you'll know what you do you don't have to control your thoughts you don't have to figure it out it will come to you there's so much freedom joy happiness peace in living that way because it's aligned with who we truly are so it makes life a whole lot easier. Excuse me. Yes, it may be uncomfortable at the beginning, but that's how we're here to live. All right. So are there any questions or comments? Anything you want to add to this? And if you're watching this on replay, please, you too, um, add any um, comments, thoughts, or questions. Sharon, all experiences of what we consider separate selves are intertwined. All experience is the same substance, just variations on the theme. Oh, beautifully said. Beautifully said. Yes, everything is intertwined. There's no separation. Beautifully said. And yes, all experience is the same substance. We're all made of the same thing. All experience, thoughts, sensations, feelings. All made of the same thing consciousness or awareness source they all are made of consciousness arise out of consciousness and expressed as consciousness so but as also Sharon said beautifully uh, variations on a theme <laughs> beautifully said variations on the theme of love peace happiness and fulfillment and um, freedom whether we know it or not, that's what's actually going on. Love how you said that, Sharon. And yes, my experience is intertwined with yours, yours with mine. Yes. And everybody that's watching this and not watching this is intertwined with everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye.